Okay, welcome back. We're going to continue with our heats of reaction chapter, and today we're going to discuss Hess's law. You're going to notice some strong similarities between Hess's law and our discussion at the during our last video segment, which was heats of formation or enthalpies of formation. We used this data table last time, and we're going to use it today along with one in the back of your book. It's Appendix A14, which is an expanded version of this table. So let's state Hess's law here. It says the enthalpy change, delta H, for a reaction is the sum of the enthalpy changes for a series of reactions that will add up to an overall reaction. Let me illustrate. Here's an equation. Now notice this is not a heat of formation equation. I'm not forming a compound from its elements. So it's a little bit different than last time. So to handle this, to find the heat of a reaction, we first need to balance this. So I'll balance this quickly for you by putting a 2 in front of H2O and a 2 in front of O2. So that equation is balanced. Then we are going to find the enthalpy change for the reaction. To do this, we'll find the total heat absorbed or released during the formation of my products. Note, products are being formed. And to find their heats of formation, we will simply either use Appendix A A14 or this data table from the previous page. Then we'll do the same thing for our reactants, but keep in mind, reactants are being decomposed. Remember, they're not being formed. The problem with that is our data tables only list heats of formation. So how do we find heats of decomposition? Well, if you remember from the last discussion, heats of decomposition are the opposite of formation. So we simply need to change the sign for the heat of formation to change it to a heat of decomposition. Then we're going to add the reactions along with their heats together to get the overall reaction and its accompanying enthalpy change. So, if you take a look here, what I've done is I've listed the, uh, the reactions for the heat of formation of my products CO2 and two water liquids, and the heat of decomposition of my reactant, CH4. You'll notice that I've left oxygen out. Remember, it's heat of formation, or heat of decomposition will be zero because it's an element. So CO2 and two waters are being formed. CO2 and two waters are being formed. And CH4 is being decomposed. CH4 is being decomposed. Now, where did I get these numbers over here? Well, let's take a look. The heat of formation of carbon dioxide is negative 393.5. I rounded it off to negative 394 just to simplify this example a touch. The heat of formation of liquid water, let's make sure we get the right water because there's gas and liquid, is negative 285.8. Now I'm making two of them, so I double it. Remember from our last discussion. Then the heat of uh, decomposition of methane I claim is a positive 74.8. You'll notice that my data table for methane says negative 74.8, but remember that's for the formation of methane. It's a reactant, so I'm decomposing it. The magnitude stays the same, but the sign changes. Then, we should be able to add these equations together to give us the reaction we're after. To do that, we take a look at these arrows. If there are similar things or identical things on the right side of the arrow, as there are on the left, they cancel out. Let me show you. Do you see how there's a carbon on the right side of this arrow? And up here, there's one on the left side of this arrow? They cancel out. Can you notice that with anything else in these three reactions? Look carefully. Yeah, good. You see it, don't you? Two hydrogens on the right side. And up here, two hydrogens on the left side. So those cancel out. Then we can add the equations together. I have CH4 remaining on the left side. I have two oxygens remaining on the left side. I have a CO2 on the right side of the arrow. And two water liquids also on the right side of the arrow. Now, does this equation look familiar? I hope it does. It's the one that we started with. CH4 and 2O2 make CO2 and two liquid waters, and that's exactly what these three equations add up to. Now, according to Hess's law, if the equations add to give the reaction you're after, the heats will add to give the heat of the reaction that you're after. So, let's take a look. 
we have negative 394 plus, I'm going to use my parentheses keys here, 2 times a negative 286, close my parentheses, and then we're going to add 74.8. Enter. We end up with, well, to the nearest whole number, negative 891 kilojoules. Now that tells me that this reaction will give off, the sign's negative, 891 kilojoules of heat per mole of methane that's burned in the presence of oxygen. Now, this is the formal use of Hess's law. You can tell it's pretty tedious and takes a little bit of time. I'm not going to say it's hard, but it is tedious. There's another method that will also work, and it will uh, accomplish the same thing. It is this equation. Now, this looks complicated, but it's not. First of all, I need to mention, this letter right here is the capital Greek letter sigma. And when we see it in this context, we're adding things together. It stands for the sum of. So if I want to find the heat of a reaction, if I want to find that number right there, I simply take the sum of the heats of formation of my products, which I can look up right here on this data table or one like it, and subtract it from the heat of formation of my reactants. Let me show you what I mean. Let's find the heat of the reaction that we just did using the alternate version of Hess's law. I'm going to take the heat of formation of my products. CO2 is 1. So, what is the heat of formation of CO2? Well, it's negative 394. Negative 394. And I'm going to add that to the heat of formation of my other product, two liquid waters. Well, what's the heat of formation of each liquid water? Sure enough, it's negative 286. Since we make two of them, we will double that. Okay, now we'll add these together. Okay, and you're going to notice that the math is pretty similar to what we just finished with. Negative 394 plus, we'll use our parentheses key again, 2 times a negative 286. Close off the parentheses. Enter. Well, this side is negative 966. Now we're not done. We have to subtract out the heat of formation of my reactants. So, my reactants are CH4 and 2 oxygens. So the heat of formation of CH4 is negative 74.8. Now, you want to stop me right here, I think, some of you, because I put a negative sign there. And you're going to say, well, Hummer, you have a positive 74.8 up here. Don't you remember? It's decomposing. So you've got to change the sign. Well, that's the, one of the neat things about this equation. Notice I'm subtracting a negative. Well, I learned a long time ago when I subtract a negative, it's the same as adding a positive, which is what I did up here. So the cool thing about using this equation is you don't have to remember whether or not to change the sign of your heat of formation. Just write it as it's written on your data table. Okay? Plus the heat of formation of my two oxygens. So that's 2 times 0. Remember, oxygen's an element, and the heat of formation of an element is 0. So we're going to subtract a negative 74.8 from that. So let's do that. So we have our negative 966. We are going to subtract a negative 74.8. And guess what we get? Negative 891 again. So, this version of Hess's Law gives us the same as that longer, drawn-out, tedious version. This is the version that we will use commonly. Okay? Unless I ask you to do it the formal way. So, should we try another one? I think we need to. I'm not quite certain that you're certain yet. So, let's try another one. Let's do example 5 from your notes. In fact, you might want to take just a minute, pause this video, and try this on your own. Just give it a whirl. Um, even though you might not be completely sure of yourself, give it a whirl. See what you do. And then unpause uh, this video and see how I do it and see how close you are. You actually might surprise yourself. So, we are going to find the heat of uh, this reaction per mole of methanol. So here's the equation. Now this is not the same as finding the heat of formation for methanol. I want to find the heat of this reaction per mole of methanol. 
So there's two ways to do this. I'm going to balance it using one mole of methanol, and sometimes when you do that, you have to use fractions to balance it. And that's a bit more mature than balancing as we've done in the past. So let's see how I would do that. One carbon, one carbon, four hydrogens. Let's put a two there to give me four hydrogens. That gives me two plus two, four oxygens. Ooh. If I put a two there, that gives me four oxygens plus one more. That's five. What if I put three halves here, or one and a half? Wouldn't that give me three oxygens total plus that one would give me my four? It does it. Yeah, it works. So we can balance that using a fraction. If you don't like three halves, you can write 1.5 if it makes you feel any better. Okay, so there's our balanced equation. And let's use our easier version of Hess's Law. We'll take the heat of formation of our products, add them all together, and subtract the heat of formation of our reactants. So, my product, I have one CO2. CO2. Should we go to the nearest temp this time? Yeah, let's do it to the nearest temp. Negative 393.5. Okay, negative 393.5 plus two water vapors. So water gas this time is negative 241.8. So we're going to double that because we're making two waters, negative 241.8. Okay, can we get a total on this side? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, negative. 393.5 plus, we'll use our parentheses key here, 2 times a negative 241.8. We'll close off our parentheses and enter. I get on this side negative 877.1. Now we're going to subtract out the heat of formation of our reactants. So we have methanol as our reactant, and there's only one of those. So methanol's heat of formation is negative 238.7. So we'll have negative 238.7. Notice I didn't change the sign. When I subtract a negative, that's taken care of already for me. That's the beauty of this version of Hess's Law. Plus 3 halves times 0. Remember, oxygen is an element, so its heat of formation is 0. So we'll add these together, and I get negative 238.7 on this side. So let's do the math. We have negative 877.1 minus negative 238.7. Enter. And I get negative 638.4 kilojoules per mole of methanol. So I did this for one mole of methanol, and that is the heat that's released, it's a negative sign, per mole of methanol that burns. Okay. Now, we can do it another way. If you don't like balancing with fractions, we can balance that previous equation with whole numbers. And then we'll just add a little twist at the end. Okay. So let's write this equation over again. CH3OH plus O2 reacts to form CO2 plus H2O gas. So, we'll balance it with whole numbers just for fun. Um, I'm going to double this. That gives me two carbons, so I'll put two there. That gives me four times two. That's eight hydrogens, so I'll put a four here to give me eight hydrogens. That gives me four plus four. Uh, that's, uh, sorry, four plus four. That's eight oxygens all together. I have two here. So if I put a 3 there, that's balanced using whole numbers. Now when I'm all done, this answer will give me the heat for 2 moles of methanol. So when I'm finished, if I only want it for 1 mole of methanol, I simply need to divide my final answer by 2, because this is for 2. Okay, so let's do it just for fun and practice, okay? We have two CO2s, so 2 times the heat of formation of carbon dioxide, negative 393.5 plus 4 times the heat of formation of my water vapor, negative 241.8, and we can get a total here in just a second, minus 2 times the heat of formation of each methanol, which is negative 238.7, plus 3 times the heat of formation of my element, which is 0. Now you go ahead and do the math along with me, okay? 
So let's clear some of these out so we can see the screen a bit better. We have 2 times negative 393.5 plus 4 times negative 241.8 and on this side we get negative 1754.2 and we're going to subtract out um, that answer from uh, 2 times a negative 238.7 and we get our final answer is negative 1276.8 so I should have done that in two steps for you let me do that for you 2 times negative 238.7 is negative 477.4 so this minus this gives us a negative 1276.8 now don't you agree that this is for two moles of methanol. So if I wanted it for one mole of methanol, I would simply divide my negative 1276.8 by 2, and I get negative 638.4. So if I divide that by 2, I get negative 638.4 kilojoules per mole of methanol, which is the same answer we got a few minutes ago. Okay. Now, I want you to try example 6 on your own. You're going to have to use appendix A.14 in the back of your book to look up some of these heats of formation because you'll notice that not all of them are listed on this chart here. So this will give you um, some good practice on looking up heats of formation. Okay, so give example 6 a whirl. I'm sure you can do it and have that ready for when we meet in class next time. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. We covered a lot of material here in a very short time. So please, once again, don't be afraid to pause these videos, to, re, uh, to start a section over again and go over it very slowly if you'd like to see what we did. Come see me with questions. I'm happy to help. Alrighty, have a great day. See you later.